limitations of grasping that we need to be familiar with in order to understand all the mathematics of the grasp, the art of manipulation in grasping. Grasping means to grasp an object, which is establish contact, control the contact forces, and move the object. Okay, so when we, this is an example of, uh, of uh, a fingertip grasp. You see there are two fingers, one on the left and one on the right of the screen. Each finger has three joints, one, two, three. Actually, the right finger has three joints, the left finger has one, two fingers. The black part is considered as fixed, okay? So it cannot move. So when you move the joints, you have these fingers moving around. Each finger is uh, <coughs> parameterized by joint variables that are referred to Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, okay? And of course in terms of torques that you can apply because at each joint you have both an encoders <coughs> that measure the position and you, you also have a motor that apply a torque, okay? Then you have tau, you have tau 1, tau 2, tau 3, tau 4, tau 5 applied at each joint. Then you have two main reference frames. One is attached to the palm of the, of the hand. Okay? Why we attach to the palm of the hand? You know why? Because it's uh, when we, the most interesting part in terms of manipulation is when you move the object inside your palm. So it's very important to move to understand the motion of the object with respect to the palm. Because then of course when you move the palm is not grasping anymore. <coughs> because you establish uh, the most important part of manipulation is manipulation with respect to the palm. Okay? Then if you move the palm it's okay. Hmm? But for the analysis that we are doing we are considering a reference frame attached to the palm. Hmm? And this is called a reference frame N, which is an inertial frame. Then we have a reference frame which is called B, body frame or object frame, that is here. They should be somewhere in the center of mass of the object. We are considering this uh, here. Okay. And then you have uh, some other important reference frame that are the complete frames. The contact frames are as much as the number of contacts you have. You have here two contact points, you have C1 and C2. Okay? For each contact point, you have, uh, we are considering a smooth surface. Okay? So for each contact point on an object, you have a tangential plane that can be defined. Because this is a smooth, a regular surface. Okay? <coughs> so there is a tangential plane. If there is a tangential plane, you can consider a normal to the contact, okay, because it's the normal to the tangential plane, and we refer this to N vector. So you have the normal vector going inward the object, okay, we call N, and then we call T and O are the two tangential versor unit vectors, sorry, onto the tangential plane. So you have a reference frame here. The Z goes, sorry, the N vector, which is the Z in the future, goes inside the object. And then you have X and Y that we refer to T and O that span the tangential plane. Okay? So our three unit vector designed this way. Uh, <coughs> of course, you are free to choose T and O. You are not free to choose N because N is given by the tangential plane. Okay? The same on the other side. Then we refer to uh, B as the origin of reference frame expressed in N. So you have a vector from here to here, which is called B, that is the position of this object, okay, of this reference frame. And you have C, the origin of this reference frame with respect to the N vector, okay? Good. Then we, you can compute the compact version of the, all the variables 
and you put all the joint variables in a joint uh, vector Q where you put all the variables and, <coughs> and Q sorry is the number of joints you can consider the velocities that are the derivative with respect to the time and you can consider the torques okay that can be any is the torque applied to the joint we'll see if it is active or passive and the joints can be prismatic or rotational okay this is a prismatic joint sorry a rotational joint okay and uh, uh, you can uh, this one yeah. which one this one yeah <laughs> I know. the one in the that one one. is important or uh, you can give me your pen this one uh, yes can you give me thanks so this is a prismatic joint okay so you will move uh, to elements along an axis okay so they can be prismatic joints and you need uh, a length in centimeter okay or whatever length unit measurement you want to use for revolutionary uh, revolutionary joints then you use an angle okay thank you <coughs> then you have uh, uh, to describe the position and the orientation of B with respect to M, you have these parameters P and V that are <coughs> the three uh, coordinates of the origin of this frame plus V are the Euler angles or any kind of other angle you want to refer this reference frame to M reference frame. So you have these six parameters to locate uh, the uh, this object reference frame with respect to the inertial frame okay and we call this u okay then the not the derivative actually but it's uh, uh, the velocity of this reference frame with respect to this reference frame is called uh, ni and ni is given by the derivative of p and by the angular velocity Remember that the angular velocity is, is not the derivative of the Euler angle or of the roll pitch and U because there is a matrix in the middle and it depends on the complexity of the rotational matrix that we will not cover in this course but we will give you reference in the additional material how to understand this. Okay? I cannot say that this is the derivative of U because of the rotational matrix because of the angles. If it was only translational and uh, Cartesian coordinates, it was the derivative. In fact, the upper part is the derivative of uh, this. Exactly, this is covered in this part of the, um, of the slide, so we can say that u dot is not equal to uh, ni but there exists a matrix V such that you can compute U dot as V uh, no. Okay, then this is in terms of the position and the velocities or twist. Twist are velocity in case you consider both linear and angular velocities. Okay, it's called twist. Like uh, uh, in terms of uh, forces, you can have a branch when you put force and moments. Okay, mm -hmm. so twist is linear and angular velocities, it's called twist. The wrench in terms of forces is, is a vector that takes into account both forces and the moments. Okay, then the, we consider G as the load of the object, which is all the forces and the moments.